My name is Ty Long and I work on the organic garden crew here at White Oak. I've been here for about two and a half, three years, and uh, this is my project. <laughs> When I first decided I wanted to farm, I was I did conventional peanut farming around here and uh, got a pretty good taste of how much that destroys all the environment around it and just kind of like, I don't know, I wouldn't say it was something that was like an immediate passion, but I wanted to do it and I wanted to do it in a way that was significantly less destructive. And uh, they let me do it here. So we plan it April 31st with the intention to, it's a third of an acre, and we intended to do about half, save for boiled peanuts for the commissary to do, and then the other half to roast and grind as peanut butter. Um, moved down that boiled part just a little bit because the boiled ones, to pick green, we have to do them by hand like this. Otherwise, you'd have to get a special picker and have it set up all differently. So we're just going to go through these by hand, and then hopefully in three or four days, we will have a uh, commercial picker out here to pick it all up. So we don't have to do this for weeks. <laughs> this morning, we ran the inverter through. What it does, it digs the peanut. It's got two blades that run underneath, digs it, and flips the vine upside down so that you can then either, you know, they'll dry in the sun easier, but also we can get to them easier. And uh, that would have been the major part that would be terrible to do by hand. Like it's kind of, you know, not necessary, but almost necessary to have the equipment to do that. This is a peanut inverter, peanut digger slash inverter. We found it in the woods and it was in pretty rough shape. If you look here, uh, the first thing we had to replace, kind of the most important part is these blades right here. You see those are brand new. They were just broken off who knows how long ago. Um, luckily we didn't have to change this chain. I was worried that this chain right here was gonna not be operable, but just oiled it up real good and uh, it worked well. We changed the pulleys on it. There were a few pulleys that were rusted out. As you see, we reused some, but had to change some out. Um, and then had the, these star guys back. These were a little busted up, so we had to straighten them, but that didn't take too much. Just a little pounding with a mallet. And this side actually had to redo pretty much all of the pulleys. I don't, this, where it was sitting, this might've been in a little more weather so these were real just jagged and you know rusted through like that is and uh that'll tear up belts obviously if it's rusted then it'll eat your belt and we had to put new belts on it too but otherwise it wasn't nearly as difficult as i thought it was going to be <laughs> we had the extension agent come out to take a look at the maturity of the peanuts um, and he let us know that a lot of people in the area harvest the ones for boiling at the same time as the ones for drying. To boil peanuts you want them to be nice and soft so you get them green. You don't dry them out um, so you get that like squishy flavor that everybody likes in the boiled peanuts. And then the other was will just lay there and feel dry for a few days before they get picked up and roasted. You have to keep the weeds out while the peanuts are establishing. It's really important so that they don't get choked out. And that just involved a lot of crawling on the ground and pulling weeds out by hand. But to control disease, we used organic copper sulfate, which is what, you know, up until the 50s, that's all there was to use and it had been used forever. But now, you know, you have more conventional fungicides and uh, stuff like that people put on it, which probably aren't the best for the uh, field itself. So the copper sulfate just sits there and doesn't allow any mold or uh, bacteria to grow. It doesn't kill anything, it just prevents the growth. And uh, it worked out pretty well. Already by the fact that, I mean, you can see that there's a significant amount of weeds even with the cultivation, which is kind of nice because it's like proof that you're doing it organically. 
Um, but also, I would bet that before the winter is over, this entire space will be full yeah. of grass again. I don't think it'll take that long. I would yeah. say in a couple weeks, this grass will be right back over the top. Yeah, and I think that's one pretty big marker. You know, if you're driving by uh, conventional fields in the winter time, it's just dirt because of the herbicides that are sprayed there. Nothing is able to grow. Um, and hopefully, I would think Ty would probably do peanuts again next season since it went so well. I, I hope so, yeah. yeah. And we wouldn't do it in the same spot again. So this ground would have tons of time to recover yeah. if we ever did it in this spot again. And really with it sitting there, I mean, obviously tilling is not great for the ground all the time, but this was bottom plowed and all before, so that was able to get the uh, soil a little more um, aerated, I guess, mm -hmm. which is good for bacterial growth and all that. So it'll really freshen up that soil and then just kind of be taken right back over into the pasture. <laughs>